The first step to understand dial current is to understand what happens to minority carriers on either side of the interface when we apply an external voltage. So the equilibrium uh, levels of carriers can be calculated very easily. In the N neutral zone, we know that N, the concentration of electrons, is equal to ND. And in the P neutral zone, we know that P, the concentration of holes, is equal to NA. And uh, we know that um, uh, this happens when we assume full ionization. Using the mass action law, we can also find the level of holes on the N side as Ni squared over ND. And we can find uh, the level of electrons on the P side as Ni squared over Na. And um, we can give subscripts to uh, indicate that these, this is the level of electrons on the N side, and this is the level of holes on the N side, this is the level of holes on the P side, and this is the level of electrons on the uh, P side. We can also use NOT to indicate that these are the equilibrium levels. So what happens to these equilibrium levels of, uh, car of, of charge carriers when we apply a forward uh, voltage? Uh, let's take a look at it. Um, so when we apply a forward voltage, the amount of forward potential appears as a difference in the Fermi level between the two sides of the PN junction. It's very important to understand that the Fermi level is meaningful only in uh, material at thermal equilibrium. There can only be a single Fermi level for a material because it represents the average energy of electrons in the material. When we have multiple Fermi levels, as is the case in a forward bias p junction, we cannot properly call this a Fermi level. So we call these two levels quasi-Fermi levels. So what is a quasi-Fermi level? It is a Fermi level, or it's an energy level, that exists in a region or in a material which is not at thermal equilibrium. Particularly important for the PN junction is what happens in the depletion region and at the interfaces of the uh, neutral zones. In the neutral zones, far away from the interface, we can return back to a single uh, Fermi level for each of them. There will be two different Fermi levels, but it's a Fermi level for each of them. And a Fermi level is interesting because you can use it to calculate charge uh, concentrations. So we know that N is equal to NC e to the power of minus EC minus EF over KT, and P is equal to NV e to the power of minus EF minus EV over KT. And so a single Fermi level is used to calculate both electron concentration and hole concentration. And this indicates the fact that if one increases, the other decreases, which leads to the application of the mass action law, which says that n times p is equal to n i square. But the fact of the matter is n times p is equal to n i square is a fact only in thermal equilibrium. So in thermal non-equilibrium, in, in, in conditions where there is, um, you know, something weird happening, the mass action law is not applicable. And these equations for charge concentration are also not applicable. This is exactly what's happening in the depletion region, but more importantly, at the interfaces, just across the, the, uh, the interface in the neutral zones. Why? Because in forward bias, what's happening at these interfaces is that we have a lot of excess holes being diffused from the P side to the N side, and a lot of excess electrons being diffused from the N side to the P side. We saw in a previous video that that's why we have a large forward current. Now, these excess carriers will then diffuse to the other side where they suddenly change the balance of carriers on that side. So, in, on the N side, just next to the depletion region, there will be an area where there is more holes than usual. Why? Because holes are diffusing in from the P side. So we call these holes excess minority carriers. And likewise, we see a lot of electrons, a lot more than usual, existing on the interface of the P side, and we also call it excess minority carriers. The action of diffusing 
majority carriers from one side and injecting them into the other side is called excess minority carrier injection. And this is the main mechanism through which current can flow in a PN junction, which is why diffusion is extremely important, because it is the main mechanism through which current flows in a PN junction. So to derive an expression for the forward current of a PN junction, we first have to derive expressions for the minority carrier levels on either side of the interface if we apply forward bias. Namely, we find that minority carriers on the N side are Ni square over Nd, and minority carriers on the P side are Ni square over Na. So the, the question is, when we apply forward bias, will the levels just at the interface increase, or will they remain the same? And if they increase, do they increase linearly? Do they increase quadratically? How do they increase? So both areas near the interface are at non-thermal equilibrium which means that they don't have carriers that are in balance. So if you multiply n by p, you do not end up with ni squared. And therefore, you don't have a meaningful Fermi level. Instead, what you have is multiple Fermi levels, two Fermi levels, called quasi-Fermi levels. Each of them, each one of these, is used to obtain the uh, charge concentration for the two uh, charge carriers. So we have two Fermi levels, one for electrons and one for holes. And we are asking ourselves, for this concentration of charge carriers, what would have been the Fermi level that causes it? And when we backtrack this way, we find that we have two values for the Fermi level, which is why we cannot call it a Fermi level. We have to call it a quasi-Fermi level. So let's go and try to calculate, for example, the uh, concentration of holes at the N interface. So the concentration of holes at the N interface we have to use the, um, we have to use, uh, so basically we are trying to find P of Xn, which is the concentration of holes at uh, the distance Xn. And so this is equal to uh, Nv, e to the power of Ev minus Ef over Kt. But we don't have a single value for uh, Ef in this case. We have two values, Efp and Efn. One is used for holes, which is Efp, and the other will be used for electrons. Now, we also need to find N of minus Xp, which is the electron concentration at the edge of the uh, N-neutral zone, which is equal to Nc e to the power of uh, minus Ec minus Ef. And again, we have to pick Efn because we have two Efs over Kt. And we notice that if we multiply n times p, it's not going to give us n i square because we are exactly at thermal non-equilibrium, right? So let's take the expression of electron concentration at minus x p. And it's important to notice that the e c that we are using here is actually e c p, right? Because we are calculating on the p side. So this is minus e c p minus e f n over k t. And we want to relate this to the equilibrium levels, so NP0. So we want to relate this to NP0, just to find out whether the uh, electron concentration at minus Xp increased relative to equilibrium or decreased. So uh, NP0 was actually uh, Nc into e to the power of minus Ecp minus Ef at equilibrium over Kt, and we just um, divide again by the same um, factors, so minus ECP minus EF over KT. Now, because at the P side, the Fermi level uh, inside the material is EFP, this means that this is the equilibrium Fermi level for uh, the P side. And so EFP is actually uh, the equilibrium Fermi level that we can use to calculate NP0 deep inside the material. And so when we do this, we end up with uh, Nc e to the power of minus Ecp minus Efp over Kt, which is simply Np0. And then uh, for the remaining uh, exponent, we have e to the power of uh, minus Ecp uh, minus Efn. And we will divide this by e to the power of minus Ecp minus Efp. And so this will cancel with this, and then we end up with NP0, which is all of this, into e to the power of EFN 
minus EFP over KT. And we just have to notice one thing, that EFN minus EFP, just looking here, EFN minus EFP is actually a quantity equal to QV bias. And therefore, we reach a very important conclusion, which is that N at minus XP is equal to NP0 e to the power of uh, V bias, QV bias, over KT. And therefore, the level of electrons at the interface of the N side increases exponentially with applied forward voltage, decreases exponentially with applied reverse voltage, and that equilibrium is equal to NP0. We can also conclude that, uh, that P of Xn is equal to P and not e to the power of QV bias over KT. This is extremely important. So what we are saying here is that when you apply uh, forward potential, this level will increase and it will increase exponentially with the applied forward potential. Similarly, this level also increases exponentially. We are finding that uh, we mention exponential increases a lot, which is uh, natural because carrier concentration in semiconductors follows from the Fermi Dirac function, which is an exponential function. We will find that this will lead to an exponential current expression for the PN junction, which should not be something that surprises us.